Hello, and welcome to the Futures Lab. So, last week we created our blue soul mechanics, which allow us to experience gravity in any of four different directions. But this week, we are going to make it so that this gravity can be activated from an attack. As you can see here, Sand moves his hand in a certain direction and turns gravity on in that direction. We are going to program our Undertale game to be able to do the same thing. And also, we're going to put in some code that's going to be useful for next week. Next week, we are going to make it so that these gravity attacks can also include these cool bone attacks. We're also going to put in some code that allows us to create these red warning boxes. So without any further ado, let's get to the code. First thing we need to do is go to our projectile sprite. Then click on my blocks and click on make a block. We're going to call this attack gravity slam. And we're going to add in one input for now. And we're going to call this input direction. Press OK. Now move this define gravity slam somewhere where you've got a lot of space underneath. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in some code that's going to be really useful for next week. We're going to turn our projectile in the direction of our gravity. So go to control, get out an if then, drag it here. Go to operators, get out an equals operator and put it here. Get the direction input and put it into the first socket of our equals. And then here, where we've got the 50, type in left. Then go to motion and get out a point in direction 90. Put it here and make sure that this 90 is pointing left. So if we type the word left into our input for our gravity slam, this little socket right here, then we're going to point the projectile left. Now at this point, if you don't want to type in left, you could change this to just an L if you wanted. But I'm going to keep it as left personally. Then it's just pretty simple. We just need to copy this whole section here. Change this to right. Adjust the direction. And do the same again for up and down. So now we need a way to communicate this to the heart sprite. We could use four different broadcasts, one for each of the four directions, but that's a lot of broadcasts. So we could just use one broadcast and one variable, the broadcast to let the heart know you need to shift into blue soul mode now, and the variable to keep track of which direction the blue soul should be facing. That should be good. Let's go to variables to create our new variable. Click on make a variable, blue soul direction. Make sure that for all sprites is selected and click on OK. Pull out a set variable. Make sure that it's set to blue soul direction. Then go to motion, the dark blue category, and pull out direction and put it right here. Then go to events, get out a broadcast, put it underneath, click on that white triangle and click on new message. We're going to call this blue soul and press on OK. Now we need to go to our heart sprite and have a look around until you find the code that we put in last week for our WASD or whatever buttons you chose. We need to get rid of almost all of these. Get rid of three of them. Doesn't actually matter which three. Then pull this switch costume and point in direction off. Throw away this when button pressed. Pull out a when I receive blue soul. Connect these up like this. Jin, Jin, I'm trying to make a video. Jin, plus. Jin, I'm trying, I'm trying to make a YouTube video. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, so next, head to variables. And pull out your blue soul direction variable, put it right here. So now the heart should change its direction according to that variable. Let's test it to see if it's working. Head back to your projectile sprite, go looking for your forever loop. Now I'm going to drag out most of the attacks here, but I'm going to leave the gaster attack there and I'm going to go to my blocks and pull out a gravity slam attack and I'm going to put it right above. Now into this input, we need to type in what direction we want the gravity to go. So let's start off with left, shall we? All right, now we should go left. Ah, oh, but we're going right. So if we try a few different directions, like if I type in right here, yet we're going in the opposite direction that we want to go in, which makes sense now that I think about it because of the way that we programmed in the falling. This is fine, there's an easy way to fix it. Head back to define gravity slam. There you are. And look for this line set blue soul direction to direction. All we need to do is get out a plus operator and type in 180, get this direction, put it there and take this whole thing back into our set variable. And now this will reverse the direction. Let's give it a test now, shall we? So this should go right and it does. For the next part, I've set up four different gravity attacks, each with one of the four directions. Make sure that you put a wait one second in between each of them though, otherwise it will do all of them at once and the only one that will work will be the last one. So now what we need to do is animate our enemy so it looks like they're the one conducting the gravity attack. They're moving their arm around and that's the direction in which the gravity is going. So head across to the enemy sprite. Now I've made some costumes for my scratch cat sprite. I used mostly the reshape tool and ungrouped a lot of the parts of the scratch cat so that you can move them around individually. If you're interested, leave me a comment in the YouTube comments to let me know that you'd like me to show you that in more detail. Otherwise, just use the sprites that you wanna use. Feel free to download some from the internet if you've got your favorite Undertale character, feel free to draw or redraw some like I have. Um, or if you want to just copy mine right now, this is how to do it. Look in the description of this YouTube video for a link to my Scratch project. Click on that and it will open up on the Scratch website and you'll see all of my sprites over here. Then all you need to do is click on Backpack down at the bottom of the screen and then drag this whole sprite over and drop it in your backpack. It'll take just a few moments and then it will appear. Then when you head back to your project, you'll be able to open up the backpack and after a second or two, you'll have access to my sprite, which you can drag and drop right into your project. Now I really recommend that you copy the costumes across. Don't try and use the sprite because the code might not be entirely compatible with your project, depending on how you've named things like variables. So just go to the costumes and drag all of these costumes across onto your enemy. It'll take just a little while, just do them all in order and you can always change these costumes later to be something else a bit more personal to you. Okay, I'm gonna head back to my project now and I'm gonna show you what these costumes are. So the first costume is just called default and that's the costume that's going to be shown when Scratch is not doing anything in particular. The next costume is called blue soul and that's when it's about to start a blue soul attack. Then we've got down one, two, three, and four. And we've got the same thing for right one, two, three, four, L up, one, two, three, and four, and left, one, two, three, and four. 
So let's make some code to animate these blue soul attacks. Head back to the code. Now we already have a really handy broadcast called blue soul. So let's go to events and get out a when I receive blue soul. And then let's go to the looks category and get out a switch costume to blue soul. That's the first frame of any of our blue soul animations. Now we need to figure out which direction we're going in. So let's go to control and get out a if then, put that right here, go to operators, get out an equals operator, put it here, go to variables, get out a blue soul direction and put it right here. Now, before we put any numbers over this 50, let's check our project and see what sort of numbers I'd put inside our blue soul direction variable. So when we go right, it's set to 270. This is, these are numbers that I'm not expecting, but that's fine because we can see them here. So we'll just make a note of them. Um, so when we're going right, it's 270, up is 180, left is 90 and down is 360. So let's type in 180 and get out switch costume to up one. Then let's duplicate all of this. Let's change this to 90 and that needs to be left one. Let's duplicate it again. This number will make it 270 and change this to right one. And last one is 360 and we'll change that to down one. So remember, we've got four costumes for each of the directions. We've got our down one, two, three, then four. So next thing is go to control, get out a repeat three. And inside that repeat three, go to looks and get out a next costume. Let's test that to see how it looks. I'm pretty happy with that. It's a very fast movement. I quite like how it looks. If you want, you could add in a like wait 0.02 seconds or something like that if you want the motion to be a bit slower and a bit easier to see. And obviously if you have more animations, like you have maybe down one, two, three, four, five, six or more, however many you want, you'll just need to adjust how many times this repeats. The last thing that we need to do is go to control, get out a wait 0.02 five seconds because once we've finished that motion we should probably return scratch or your enemy to its default costume let's go to looks and get out a switch costume to default so that should be everything for this week as always you can subscribe and ring the bell to get notifications when the next episode is ready for you let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next or if you need any help with your code. Aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.